recording. And away we go. Ooh, 25th of May. Beautiful. Ooh, yeah. Seven months till Christmas. We are in New York. Lady Un. So the Federation president is in. There she is. She's in no mood for Lady Un's, uh, like, non explanation of why people who are, like, um, all for peace are suddenly flipping their shit and going berserk. Um, and she and the cooler heads in the legislature are nearly out of options to prevent all, prevent all out military intervention. And the upcoming talks with Haman are probably not going to help. They just need to find some clues uh, during the joint military exercises being held near the L3 point, Lagrange. Um, so maybe nothing will happen, but you know. And Lady Yoon says, it's the colony of X18999999. And uh, her suspicions about it predate the breaking of the world and even the original descent of the colonial Gundams to the surface. And even with a trustworthy observer dispatched to the scene and Bright Noah heading in with personal charge, might not be able to avert whatever's coming. But, a mysterious blonde man comes in and uh, wants his, he wants his preventer code name. And another mysterious man comes in who's, uh, he says he, um, he's the lightning code. That'd be a good preventer one if he was preventer lightning. And uh, but the world's yeah, it's like you don't know who they are, but they're like yeah, okay, yeah. They're, so they were arguing about who gets what preventer call sign, and um, the second one said he wanted to be lightning, and maybe the first one should be wind. Yeah, the lightning in that room sucks. Is it just walking in? Meanwhile, Camille and Armour are having a real talk about who could possibly have been piloting the mobile suit, and uh, they agree that it felt like Shah, but definitely isn't Shah at the same time. And Camille says it's definitely not Quattro. 100% not Quattro. Uh, forcing the world to improve by waging war on it would be a little hypocritical after, you know, all the times he yelled that Trays and Zero were bad. But if it's not Shah, it's certainly someone who's as good as him, and someone that, like, has legit inherited the Red Comet name, and that's pretty worrying all by itself. You left Palmy sweating, you don't know why? I mean, it's gonna down. And then a bunch of kids just fucking come in and interrupt this bullshit, and Kessie's just being like, oh, hey, this is Amaro. And uh, she loves how Londo Bell's got so many people, like Amaro and Camille. Incredible and Benaji and Shin because he's sort of like a new type, I guess. And she wants to be friends with all of them. And Benaji's the only one who can pilot the new toy that Anaheim care all about. So he's like, Oh, Benaji, you're the Anaheim test pilot. He's like, Sort of. I'm the only one who can pilot the Unicorn, at least. And Audrey still regrets getting Benaji mixed up in everything, but he's firmly in the nope, I, I, it was my decision. I did it, and he set his mind on, like, doing his stuff. Uh, the only person who seems pretty grumpy about the whole thing is, of course, Mikot, because she likes Banaji, and Banaji, one, uh, doesn't notice this, and also never stops fucking talking about Audrey. It's like, Audrey, why you keep looking at Audrey? Oh, nothing. It's like, oh, jealous much? <laughs> I don't have to be a new time to figure that out. And then Takuya starts fanboying out and he's like, uh, Amaro, could you sign this for me? He's like, oh, what? He's like, come on, you're the, the white shooting star. Come on from the One Year War. He's like, oh, I'm I'm no idol like Granker or Cheryl. No, no. He's like, come on, you piloted the RX-78, you're Amaro, right? Come on. He's like, God. And then Audrey's like, this man is Amaro, Ray. And then Kess is like, what are you looking at Amaro for? You bit, it's like, a bit conflicted on uh, how you feel about Amaro, huh? And Hathaway uh, lectures Kess and he's like, no, no, come on, don't just read other people's hearts and like like that. You show like respect and like 
to their feelings and their privacy. She's like, I'm a new type, I'll do whatever the hell I want. I read shit with my brain. But anyway, Audrey, I'm sorry, it's, it's alright. New type. And, um. And I'm just like, what are you talking about, new types? So, uh. Like, the theory of uh, the truly connected people, uh, yeah, he says that new types um, that were truly connected would never have waged the one year war in the first place. And I'm just like, I mean, you're right, dude. Um, but he agrees entirely that true, real, 100% guaranteed new types would definitely find other ways of improving the world. And he finds hope in Camille and Banaji's generation. Not in, like, their new type potential, but just in the power of their youth and optimism. Um, Vinaji's off to a good start, because he's like, hell yeah, I'm to say. Like, it's really fucked up, right? That Vinaji's like, hmm, new types, if they were real, I don't think the one-year war would have happened. And, like, Camille and Amro are sitting there and like, dude, we're, they're real. We're them. You can't just... When humanity's gonna get ultra-murdered, you can't just sit by no matter how much you want to talk. Not everybody's a new type. If everybody was, brilliant, but not everybody is. Fuck you. Um, and then Shin talks about how Amuro is the ace pilot, and then Kat says, Oh yeah, Bright used to slap the shit out of him all the time. And it was, uh, live and learn on that one, or just die. Um, Suzanne has learned a good balance between her teacherly and private lives, and uh, she's going to need every ounce of it to keep her mickey from imploding, apparently. And apparently, yeah, Hibiki's been uh, hanging out in the hangar. So, let's uh, get over to that. Where's Hibiki? Oh, he's been doing shit in the simulator. Ah, he wants to be as good as Amuro, I guess. So, he's like, hey guys, where are you going? And they're like, oh, I didn't see you there. He's like, I've been waiting. But he's been waiting for these guys, because they're about to go to the colony, and he's like, you're going to the L3 colony. He's like, what do you know about it? But yeah, they're going, and um, they're sneaking off, and rather than trying to stop them, he's like, take me with you. He's like, what? Well, we thought, it's not like hiking or some shit, kid. And um, he's like, no, I, I know that, like, learning... Like, piloting technique alone, even with, like, brilliant teachers like Amuro, won't make me truly strong. So I, I want to hang out with you guys and learn, like, actual fighting. And then Hero's like, yeah, alright, fine, sure. So like, I'll give him a shot. Um, or, uh, like, he's like, I'll give him a shot, and he's like, wait, Hero, really? And he's like, we don't have time to tell him no. Alright. So Drew's like, yeah, alright, as well, if, like, Susanae's up for it, fine, you can come. And then Susan comes in and is like, Hey, Vicky! Susan A. It's like, Oh, hey, me and Hero will be over here for a minute, just doing this, we'll wait for you. And um, she asks why Hibiki wants to voluntarily put himself in harm's way. Um, says, like, the tra like, is the training on the Nihal oh, not good enough? She says, like, Camille says it's doing you loads of good. And he says vaguely that he's got to learn how to fight no matter what the circumstances, including mastering his barehanded um, boost up stuff. And becoming a um, a gorilla expert, which is what he says there on the, the the first three characters on the bottom line is gorilla. He wants to become a gorilla expert, um, like duo and hero. And um, when she says, "But why?" he won't answer. And she says, uh, uh, "She says uh, who his opponent is." Then, if he like, why has he got against like, if not why, but who have you got to get so strong against? And he says that uh, it's not any specific set of invaders or war itself, but it's something that he just can't bring himself to name right now. And Susan is like, well, all right, then I'll push you on it. Um, but she says, just promise me you'll tell me like when the time's right. And he's like, all right. And she's like, all right then. Well then, let's go. Because otherwise, your own duo will leave us behind. He's like, you're coming. He's like, hell yeah, I'm your partner. How old is Hero and Duo? I believe. 
I can look that up for when they, how old they're in this one. This is um, the prelude to war. War's prelude. Hero Wii in Endless Waltz is 60. So, Duo and Hero are actually like 18. I get the minimum. So here's this fucking Joker. Patrick. Oh, Patrick Mannequin, he's at it again. Even though his the thing there says Cooler Sir, his name is Patrick Mannequin. And uh, he reminds uh, all the Federation soldiers here that Earth Noids and Space Noids doesn't matter. Space Noid. Earth Noid. It's like it's all just about helping everybody, and here's the Earth Noids on the space like, the Earth Noids on the left, the Space Noids on the right wanna fight each other. This is a Space Noid attack! Earth Noids are attacking the colony! But what the heck how did this happen? See now they're just flipping their shit, they're like, we're gonna get them, stop them, and everyone's going mad. What the heck? They blew up everybody. Like Zeon scum. Fucking Federation dog. Yo, yo, stop it, everybody. Yo, stop it. You have it all, everybody. You have it all. Kill it, chill it. So they start shooting each other, and Patrick nearly fucking dies. And then. Whoosh! How are you doing, Patrick Cooler, sir? Uh, uh. What did he do? He's like, I'm Preventer Lightning. And it's Graham. He's back. He's, he's Preventer Lightning. Like, whoa, dude, you just saved my butt. He's like, yes, you're the ace of the AEU, the invincible cooler sir. He's like, that's right, except now I'm Patrick Mannequin. But I am still an ace. He's like, anyway, let's get let's keep this together, Lightning, and like sort this shit out. He's like, alright. And then the SR point is shoot down all Federation Neo Zeon units do not allow them to shoot down each other. So this is one of those ones. But yeah, here's Patrick and here's Graham. He's good, he's got extreme and he's preventer lightning. I mean I suppose I should sit here so they'll try and Fucking fight me. Look at this shit. Everyone wants a piece of the Patrick. <laughs> that Bushido without mask? He's indeed Mr. Bushido without, without his mask. Here's these jokers. Let's do this, Lightning! Let's come down to this, so let's give him a taste of what the Aces of the Federation Army can do! What a swift counter-attack! I suppose I should follow his example. I made my peace, the past is behind me, and I'll dedicate all that I am to see my mission fulfilled! Yeah, who's that wind fellow then? Who knows? Who we got? Um, when Graham um, pairs and supports... Preventer Wind, he calls him uh, Fujin, so they're Raijin and Fujin. He's like, yes, Wind God, let's go. And Raya Maker, the brave. This is a bunch of bullshit, why are you killing me? I'm a space boy. Gira Doga. What the hell got me? There we go then, sorry, Colonel. Bing, bing, bing. Bing, bing, bing. Bing, bing, bing. I'm gonna hit this shit 
so be in bad colors. GN, the GNX is really good with the Jinx. Jinx and GNX. The Jinx and the Jinxie. Jinx and the Jinxie. I hit the face too. I'm having trouble with this dude. And then we shot. So we arrive and it's like, wow, it's Londo Bell. What the? So what are these two doing here? They're like, hey, prevent the lightning here. We're here, these dudes just started kicking off. We're here to protect the colony. Lend us your strength. It's like, oh, all right, Lendo Bell, Captain Bright Noah here. Hey, we're a hero in her Mickey. You know, the like, oh, they just fucking win. Let's go anyway, let's go. Um, Amuro has some advice for Banaji though, to protect himself uh, above all else. And if he can't do that, he certainly can't protect anybody else. And then Banaji is uh, like, hey, Banaji, did you just, the NTD system happen? Like, keep doing it and maybe we'll figure out uh, what actually makes it go. And he's trying to avoid the cockpits. Who's this mysterious little lady? And uh, they're like, ooh, yeah, action's unfolding. Ooh, we won't have to lift a finger. Look at these. Are they? Could they possibly be? Oh yeah, Londo Bella here, and they will do our work for us. Make Alberto look worse? No, that's just what Alberto looks like. He's always looked like that. Sorry, Rudy, you just basically don't exist right now. This is Armoro time. Where's Bushido's Graham back, Mick? Uh, it got blown up. You blew it up. Fucking got him, Amaro. Fucking got him. ボンポンの雑魚モビルスーツか。指導者の援護に踊らされた結果がこれか。その隙を逃がすものか。他にいくらでもやり方はあるはずだ。スパークが出てきてね。どこへ引き捨てない。だだだだだだ。ああ、グ
can't believe the Jigans are easier to hit than the Gyaradogas. Eat this, Joker. Blam I right in the face. That is such a rude boy. If I'd attacked uh, this squad with Patrick and Graham, then these guys would have been able to kill them and use the go again to get in a better position, and it would have sped this up. So that was bad of me. But honestly, no, these guys can even get within range. Oh, and you missed um, Banaji. He shot his bazooka, and um, a man in a gear Zulu just held out his beam tomahawk and just sword cut the missiles down. It was fucking amazing. The airhorn song is so loud, and you can't even adjust volume in game in this one to help. Like, not on a per song basis. This is the end. Shit, but Anji, if you just done like 300 more damage, your voice would have been golden, but instead. Being stupid loud's half the fun? Yeah, maybe for you. None of the fun for me. Because there's zero fun. I mean, I guess maybe that is half the fun, because I have zero fun. Maybe half a zero doesn't look that, but I don't know. I'm not living on this. Oh, I'm damn dead. I'm damn dead. I'm dang dead. I died. Whoops. I'm Space Boy. Dang. Right, we accelerate. He's so good. Whoosh! Okay, I'm not gonna shoot anything. Get him, Otto. Get him! Jibun no yakume wa wakatte iru. Okan wo shizumete yaru! Kaku hozo wa! あんまこう今の倍は厚くしよう。温度ベルを叩き落とす。損傷確認。急げ。走行に傷がついた程度のようです。ここまで
メガリュウシュウだ急げバナージーズアイスカーニーウェフォース。ジョーケンはゴムとゴム。ネタイはついた。サーフィンアイス。無駄だと分かった。交代してくださいよ。ネオジオはどうしてこんなことを。ロック、完了。ガンダムには俺も恨みがある当たってたまるか戦いを広げてるだけじゃないかお前たちはバンプゴロフ。I just hope they miss. Got a reload. Again, thing. Yeah, the good old NPC Ryan S. R. Wayne, just straight up. Like I got a game over earlier, just because, you know, they gave me Hero in a Leo and Tetsu in a, in a flag, and I had to fight a boss. And, you know, they fucking died. And like, I think Setsuna straight up had like 3,100 health, so it was like, alright, so the boss hit him and he's dead. There you go, brilliant, great. Let's try that again. What's the point of being here if you can't blow your ride up? Interesting question, and you'll see the answer to that. The answer is there's no point to being hero, and that's why I won't use him. I just restart the game, yeah. I've only did a save because I game over it. I um, failed the SR point because I had some dudes. Jokers attack them. Jokers attack 
troops come up here. Get them, and they've got to go again for the multi action. Nice work. Attack these guys. Emma comes up here, and she shield launches this Joker. Stand in that guy's way. Play that up. And hopefully, with everybody but those guys at full health. The invincible cool sir. Actually, he's I just caught this have his thing as Patrick. I don't know if it's cooler sir. It's not even his fucking name. Um, the ace. Um, actually, I think these two jokers can actually get the bop on those guys. The break's really good, but I wish I could put Graham in the double O. Just anything, just anything better. Get out of here, Space Noid! Peacecraft. 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 I can't believe these two guys aren't aced. That seems very strange to me. But it doesn't matter because they're going to be aced in the next game for sure. Um, let's get the Jokers, I guess. That was really, really stupid piece of shit that can't even transform. It's just a robot with a big backpack. It's lying down under it. It'll get you. See, 
Speed activates 110. No, you haven't got that. Too slow. That's actually perfect because now the dude in the back is hurt, which means this joker's good work. Thanks, Fla. Hanging out with you is a real experience. It's a lot of effort. So we blow that joker up. SR point. Got him. So we did it. Hey Patrick. Do you call him? Call, no, he called him Patrick Mannequin. So Bright's at least read all the dossiers. So yeah, we did it. Nice work. Let's check out all these pilots because we didn't shoot any of the the cockpits. Yeah, but yeah, well, like we'll see if they can. Uh, Yeah, we'll see if we can get any clues from the unconscious pilots. Um, but we doubt it, because that's what it's like in the previous instances. They always just started acting funny out of nowhere. Which is what Patrick was explaining. So, hope relies with the advanced scouts in the colony. And here we are, just these two idiots not saying shit to each other. Uh, and they're just waiting for Duo to radio in. Uh... Uh, Hiro asks Hibiki to explain what he's deduced so far, and Hibiki says that it says the fact that Troa Barton, um, the Gundam pilot, infiltrated the terrorists uh, in particular, like means a lot because he grew up in the L3 colony, and that leads him to believe that something fishy's going on. And uh, X18999 colony is uh, unfinished and would make a great stage in the ground for ne'er do wells and shenanigans. Hibiki asks uh, Hiro, uh, who once battled the nations of Earth on behalf of the colonies, would now be aiding the Federation. And Hiro says he's doing, he's doing nothing like that at all. He's fighting uh, on his own behalf, or rather on uh, on behalf of that which he most dearly wishes to protect. And um, footsteps, a mysterious dipshit shows up and is like, "Oh, is uh, that you wish to protect this messed up world, perchance?" He's like, are you and your friends in the right, hero? It's like, Wufei, hey, fuck off, dude. Just shit. So, oh, colony coming out of colony, a shuttle coming out of the colony. What the heck? Oh no, those are the new robots. What the heck? It's the thing that draw. What the heck? Burr, jerk, fucking burr. The ghetto boys trying No, the ghetto. There's only one ghetto boy, and he's down on earth having a good time. But in the shuttle is a child who calls herself Mare Maya. It's like, whoa, it's a kid on a shuttle talking to us. 
and she announces herself as Marimaya Kushplinada, um, the rightful heir to ADW's rightful ruler, Beatrice, and uh, she declares war against all of the Federation on behalf of all like-minded people. And she's going to um, destroy Colony X18999999. And uh, that will hopefully escalate tensions between Earth and space to the breaking point. And she thinks that she can even Kushinada, Chase Kushinada had a little girl, and she hopes that um, Wando Bell can even get blamed for this. So she's blowing up. What the heck? They're attacking the colony. He's like, yes, you guys will get blamed for this bullshit. Eat shit. Ha 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 and then they're, they're giving Marimaya Sama. Look at her, she's just fucking my wife so shit. She's awful. And then the So guesses on Marimaya Krishnada's deal. None of you'll get it right, unless you remember me talking about what ended up being the truth in stuff written years and years later. Uh, then Deku was like, the serpents will handle it, it'll be good. Oh no, what the heck? They're getting blown up. This is... Hey look! The tall geese! Ah, there he is. Lightning, you recognize this fella? He's like, yes, this is Preventa Wind. Zex Marquis. He's like, yeah, that's me. Howdy. So, he was supposed to be dead. And Zex says, well, if Trace's ghost can manifest, then I can't be expected to hide in my coffin forever, can I? And um, it's not the best um, conditions for a reunion between the former enemies. But Duo's managing shit inside the colony. So, hey, look, it's Noint in the Taurus. And then Hero comes out in his stupid ride, and he's like, I've gotta, gotta help you against the mobile suit still always indoors. Howdy, Hero, Zex. I'm gonna try and save everybody. And Deku and Maramaya escaped, of course. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Let's go, Hero. Duh! Ultron Gundam? The only person who's actually got their Gundam is Wu Fei? Buh! What's Wu Fei doing? He's like, fuck you guys! Blammo! What the heck, Wufei? What's up with you? Why are you attacking us? It's just a shit. He's Wufei, mate. Uh, don't worry. Colony Gundam pilot. Wufei, wasn't he part of you? Yeah, I guess he's like Cho and has gone bad or whatever. Alright, everybody. Fuck him up, Wufei. You guys are all shit and I hate you. I'm gonna show you that you're all bad and... Like, you're not in the right. Show me your justice. It's like, dude, just fuck off. So, there's Zex. His ace bonus is, upon deployment, everybody has Accelerate cast on them. Which is fucking gross. <laughs> it's so good. So, uh, Zex will be the one in the wing Gundam. Because his robot's pretty good, but it's only post-movement attack. Is that. And the, like, the wing zero is better. So, we'll just have that instead. And the, the Taurus is still the Taurus. Still just shit. If, yeah, that, I mean, that dude was the one who was the top of the year, isn't it? So. Yeah, we just had Accelerate cast on him, thanks to the boy. Of course you trouble once again. Biggest problem was you leaving without telling me where you were going. You understand how many sleepless nights I had because of that? Please forgive me. I do, Zex. You returned to me and now we found a new battle. Then I've nothing to fear. I'll fight the world as Zex Marquis once again. How Zex survived and escaped in the he always survived. Like we all knew that he wasn't dead. Like when we blew him up, he was like, I will watch on with a warrior's eyes. It's like. 
देते हैं Yeah, marry my uh, uh, is Tracy's daughter with uh, Leia Barton, I think. Like you'd expect it to be Dorothy, but it's not Dorothy. Uh, but then it turned out that actually she's a clone, and it turns out that like seventy percent of everybody on Earth in Wing is a clone. And it's like we didn't even know the clones were on the fucking table as an option. Like we didn't know that technology existed, and now you've just revealed to everybody like that's. The big twist is that everybody's a fucking clone. Thanks, man, who wrote Snow White bullshit. Drop. I don't know, it's by, but it is a remix of. Uh, <laughs> A world full of loot fays. Well, just awful. Just awful. But yeah, but, but, but like, final issue of Frozen Teardrop comes out, it's like, oh yeah, Maramaya was a clone, uh, everybody's a clone, like, 70% of Earth's population is clones, and just nobody knows it. And it's like, clones have never been mentioned before in the entire fucking story. It, none of the works has cloning and cloning technology ever been fucking mentioned. It's like, what? Fuck off. I haven't seen any babies being born either. That is not even remotely relevant. Yeah, it's a it's a manga or anything, but they are making a thing for it. They are making a TV show for it. It's coming up. And and Zex is a big hologram. He died, so they got a big hologram of him. Turns out they got a hologram of Zex. Like, why not just fucking clone him? Everybody's a clone. Everybody can make clones. Why not just clone Zex? No, he's a hologram. And then, um, like, the only good bit is uh, Hildy and Duo get married. Um, and she because, and she's queen of Mars, and she has banned Duo from going back to Mars until he fills out the divorce papers. Because she's sick of him. <laughs> and he's just like, no! I'll get round to it when I get round to it. It's like you're banned from fucking Mars and dick shit. It's the boy who's fast. Look at all these fast teleporting boys. With the dog dick. Yeah, it's just. It's good thrust, it's good. It's good. I like it when you use thrust to not fly backwards. Going with the dog dick. Glamour. Slam. Ugh, it's sensitive to see it coming. 